Yep. Did you stretch? I did stretch. <laughs> okay, good for you. Actually, got a little workout. All right, Mark, can they hear us? They can hear us. Are, All we, right. are we live? We are live. We are back with episode 43 as I fumble through my notes here. But, with episode 43, how many is that? Four. 43. Three. We are back with episode 43 of the Metal Roundtable. I am Metal Rob, and with me as always is the great... Carcass John. And we have a very special guest today that I will introduce first, and then we'll do shout-outs. Okay. So, we're going to have to be on our best behavior. Do you know why? <laughs> yes, I do, but you explain the reason. We have a principal in the house today, kids. Oh. So, when I was in junior high... I think I've told you this. I had a desk in the principal's office. <laughs> I really did. So And look at you now. So we'll get we'll get to the topic here in a couple of minutes, but as I adjust everything in the studio here. So you've got some shout outs, I think. I do have some shout outs. Uh let's hear it. Uh one pretty serious one and, and I don't like you know, we've had that episode a while back where Stand by. Okay. We've forgotten something very important. What's that? What the hell is on your shirt? <laughs> okay. Well, what does it look like? Okay. I see. Hang on. All right. It, it, for those of you who are just seeing this for the first time, the carcass always wears a shirt. With an, not always. Sometimes he wears a kiss shirt or something easy. But, but somebody wears, couldn't read it because. Uh, yeah. Somebody that shall remain nameless, our fearless producer leader. So I think. Oh, anyway. He wears. Uh, shirts that you can't read the logo and tries to stump me because mine are always crisp and clean like Kiss or Metal Church. Today I'm wearing the No Life Till Metal. Thank you very much. We're going to give away a record in a minute. From okay. Those guys. So go ahead. Take your best shot. <sighs> what do you think that says? I can't even begin to take a guess. Okay. So they're throwing me off a little bit because the last part looks like an E, but it's not. It's not. That shirt says vitriol. Boom. You're getting so much better at this game. Is that it? That's it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And that's there we of, go. And that's one of my <laughs> shout outs. Um, it's one of my shout outs. Uh, I saw them on Saturday. They were part of the package that opened with uh, uh, Vader and. Uh, Oh, okay. Super, super. Um, uh, Vader, Abysmal Dawn, Hideous Divinity from Italy, and uh, and Vitriol, and then they had two local bands, Empty Shell and Frozen Soul, which is just crushing. Uh, and I can't believe they're they're a new band. They're not even a year old, I don't think. But um, but thanks. A shout out to Stephen from the, the from Vitriol for hooking me up, and uh, with, with the um, with the Vitriolic shirt. Nice. Yeah, I dug it. They're a great band, too. I'm struggling with my microphone. I'm sorry. I was uh, being distracting. Go ahead. Keep, you were being distracting? Keep going. I'm trying, sorry. Uh, well, I, and, I, and I don't normally read. I, I was going to say, too, the, uh, the guys from Hideous Divinity were so overwhelmingly good. I'd never even heard of them and didn't know where they were from. Uh, they, looked like, they looked like they were not a, a typical American band, however, and I was right. They're from Rome, Italy. And they put out several records, and they were absolutely <laughs> blistering. And you're gonna still I'm adjust. Sorry. You're gonna adjust your mic the whole. It. Yeah, but anyway, uh, but en Enrico Di Lorenzo, who's the lead singer and kind of the mastermind of, uh, of the band, was working the merch table. Super, super, very gracious, very nice guy. And uh, and so, uh, but uh, anyway, support them. It, they're they're really really awesome. It you know we we talked a little bit about how much it takes what kind of an effort it takes just to get on the road but oh, yeah. com but coming from Europe to come here right and uh and Vader was absolutely de devastating and uh they did 18 songs a couple of cover tunes including Judas Priest Steeler um it, it was pretty amazing cool uh, what was the venue Ridgely like, Room right? no, no Gas Monkey Oh, okay. Gas Monkey uh, Live, or the bar, the bar and Grill, I'm sorry. Okay, it, okay. It probably should have been in the live because it, it was so packed. Nice. Um, you you know, ran into the great Billy Frazier. I did. I, I did hang out with him in, in his uh, tie-dyed Misfits shirt. <laughs> uh, he must have taken a... <laughs> I taken love a, that guy. <laughs> he, he must have taken the cue from my giant blanket that I yes. brought uh, last episode. Yes. But uh, yeah, it was good to hang out with him and saw some other folks that I hadn't seen in a while. It was a good time. was had by all... Uh, Vader was just 
totally punishing, just amazing. And uh, I can't believe that they've been around for 30 plus years, and I've never seen them do a headline tour. John likes the kind of music where it sounds like you're starting a chainsaw. <laughs> a lot, lots of gurgling yeah, and but gargling. We, but we going love God. <laughs> We love him. So please go ahead. You're doing great. <laughs> okay. Well, and, and my shout out, and like I said, not to bring down the room, but uh, th- this guy is an amazing person. Hannes uh, Bojax, he's the, uh, the, uh, the guitarist for a band called Sixes. Mm-hmm. They just got off a European tour. They've do, uh, they toured through Texas not too long ago. In fact, uh, they're friends of Forebode. We keep going back to that. They're like our go to. We, we, when we expand the studio and we have an actual house band it'll have to be forebode at least initially i I 100 percent agree but he i I just saw him saturday in fact i invited him to the show i said you want to go with me to the show it it was uh he and his wife were having a baby shower they're a few months away from from their first child um she's from here he's from uh well he's from europe um Mm -hmm. but uh they're living in california uh because the band stuff but anyway Crazy, crazy, you know, I shook his hand, gave him a hug and said, good luck. And he said, yeah, I'm kind of, ha- I kind of don't feel great. I got, got a little bit of a headache. I, I don't, I don't think I'll be going tonight. And, uh, mm-hmm. and, and besides they were leaving the next day and two hours later he was in the hospital, uh, in, in a, in a medically induced coma. So I'm, we're hoping for the best. Um, he's still hanging in there. What uh, happened to him? He, he had an aneurysm. aneurysm. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, and, and so once again, I mean, not to get all philosophical and sappy or whatever, but man, enjoy it while you can. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, life is pretty cruel and pretty short sometimes, but, um, you know, Tara, to her credit, has stayed positive. Her family is here to support her, and uh, shout out to them for for really uh, coming, uh, loading both barrels and, and keeping things under mm-hmm. wraps and, and, and supporting her in this. Uh, so... If there yeah. ends up being a fundraiser or something, look, we'll put that up on the page. But a, but a, but an outstanding guy, great musician, and uh, it's just oh, it's it's hard to see somebody yeah uh, in front in front of you like we're doing now, and then a couple hours later they're just they're yeah. just not you know they're incapacitated incapacitated to some. But so anyway, like I said, don't mean to drag the room down, but a shout out to to Hannes, stay strong, my brother, and uh, and Tara and her family. Yeah, keep it keep it going. Yeah, we'll, we'll hope for the best. Anyway, that's it. That's all the shout outs I got. Okay. Oh, and and shout out to Jay Fuchs. Please stay out of Facebook jail, would you? <laughs> Jay Fuchs from uh, Sound of White Noise. Oh no. Uh, yeah, he's a great distro local guy. Uh, yeah. And uh, do we I, need to go visit him in Facebook? I, jail? I think, do you visit people in Facebook jail? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Do you take them food? I don't or know. I think Facebook is what? taking themselves a little seriously these days, but because I see some of the stuff they allow, and then some of the stuff that gets. People get bounced for? Uh, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, must, another buddy of mine got bounced. Too. They must check their voting record or something. Yeah. But I digress. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh. Yes. I just had the one. I just wanted to shout out Scott Waters at No Life Till Metal Records that sent us this. Uh, we we gave away the Banshee CD last week. So this is our official this week. Be the first person or any person to call. <laughs> 877-337-5844. Talk to Monkey Butt over there. And we'll hook you up with a record of your choice. We've got Circle of Silence from No Life Till Metal. We've got Banshee from No Life Till Metal. <laughs> I mastered both this of makes, those. This makes me laugh. I'm sorry. We've got Tango Down from Brutal Planet Records. And we're, here we are talking about Vader. And, then we and have... Romeo Riot from Brutal Planet Records. So take your choice of those four. Give us a call, 877 the great Mark will take your uh, details, and we'll send you a record for free. How about oh, free. that? Oh, free. So thanks to those guys for sending us some good. What was that number again? I'm going to call in. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I do that? Well, I can just hand it to you right now. Oh. Ding dong. Oh, I don't have to call in? No. Oh. So let's get to let's get to the point here, okay? Because we, we're off task, and the classroom management skills <laughs> over here are about to kick in. We don't want to wind up in the principal's office. We do not want to wind up in the principal's <laughs> office, so let's get this kicked off. So... I'll tell you the story of how I met my friend, Carol. I work for a school district, and that's just all we need to know about that. And I, part of my job is I travel around visiting campuses for different things and fixing stuff and whatever. So anyway, I roll into her office one day. Some, eh, It's been a while back. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't remember. And I think what caught my eye was maybe that 3D Beatles right. poster or something. And, um, 
So we got to talking about music and records and whatnot. That's shocking. I, I know. Isn't you that crazy? You to somebody about music? <laughs> right. So the next thing I know, we've had this brilliant conversation about some really cool classic rock stuff. And do we want to do the, um, which t- story do you want to tell first? Well, you lead me into whatever you want okay. to tell. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you the story that really got me hooked. Or I'll let you tell the story. But, I'll, but we get to talking. And we get to talking about Pink Floyd records and, you know, Jimi Hendrix and whatever, Janis Joplin. I don't remember what all. And uh, we get to talking about um, Queen. And so she starts telling me this Queen story. And I can't. Yeah. So it's it's trust me it's totally fine <laughs> production value see, yeah it's production yeah. value it's if totally you've seen fine. some of the earlier episodes that's... yeah, <laughs> Sorry yeah. About that. I, no 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 i will be checking my phone and checking <laughs> facebook it's it's yeah so she starts telling me this story about queen but back us up from there because you worked at peaches and Pe- you remember peaches record oh yeah yeah, so people our age and older will remember Peach's Records. So, yeah, take it. All right, so I was the ticket manager of Peach's Records and Tapes in St. Louis, Missouri. And the reason I was there is because I fell in love and with a man from St. Louis and moved there and got married and um, had my teaching degree but wasn't certified to teach in Missouri. So I thought, well, I think I'll do something fun and got hired at Peaches and being the ticket manager got first choice at the best tickets that we (laughs) sold to the concert. Winner. Lots lots of perks. Yes. So the only people who got better tickets were the dignitaries, the disc jockeys, the, um, you know, city people who were interested. Um, So anyway one time Queen happened to come through. Um, There were a lot of fabulous bands that came through, and we went to see a lot of them. But uh, And so they would all come to the Checker Dome. It's called the Purina Checker Dome in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, I've actually been there, believe it or not. Yes, ma'am. Hopefully it doesn't (laughs) exist anymore. It was in pretty pretty bad shape. No, it was pretty dilapidated. In fact, I saw Head East in Kansas there. Yeah. So anyway, but go ahead. Right. I, I'm very right. familiar with that barn, and it literally was more like a barn, more than, like a, a barn. than a venue. I used to look around when we'd sit there and think, now, if this place catches on fire, which exit am I going to get out from? <laughs> yes, I've <laughs> so, done that. So anyway, um, we got to go see Queen, and we were on the 13th row. It was November of 1978, and sitting back on the 13th row, right smack dab in the middle, and they were so fantastic. It was just incredible. The bad thing is, is that people didn't have cell phones back in those days. So we weren't snapping selfies and taking a lot of pictures. But Rob here has identified my two mystery photographs. Uh, the only two I have of all the concerts we went to as being queen. That's so right. those were great. Those from from that show. From and do, that show. Do you know how we can prove that she was on the 13th row? In section B, seat five for Queen. Because she actually has a ticket stub. Because there's the ticket stub. stub. You know, I might remind you that at the Vader show on Saturday, they actually get offered you a ticket stub. Nice. Oh, they don't no, do that anymore. No, and it was so it was so insanely rare that I said, of course I'll take a ticket stub because yeah. I hang them on the wall. Yes. Now, this is not the best part of the story, though. No, this is not the best part of the story. But I was telling Rob before about my ticket stub that it's not worth anything on eBay but it's really worth about a million dollars yeah. to me. So of course, and this, I, I and this is the really news of the world of tour. So this right? is seventy eight, yeah. right? 78. Yeah, November of seventy eight. November of seventy eight. It was right around Thanksgiving time. So we're all sitting there, and, and they start the show, and things are going great, and all of a sudden the sound system starts crackling out, and it crackles in the middle of a song, and they keep playing, and it comes back on, and then it crackles out, and then it comes back on. And you could tell that they were getting frustrated. And all of a sudden, it just went crackle, 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 and nothing. And so Freddie Mercury stands up on the stage and to the whole auditorium says, I'm just going to sing. Don't worry, guys. We're going to keep this concert going while they work on the sound. And he went and sat on the edge of the stage 
and sang, and his voice filled that entire arena. <laughs> it was that is so phenomenal. Awesome. You could have heard a pin drop in there. People's chins <laughs> were in their laps because he had such a phenomenal voice mm-hmm. and four octave voice, and it literally carried that whole place. And I, again, I, I would have killed now to have a cell phone and to have been able to video it. But I've got the memories up here of it. Yeah. Um, just really awesome. Best concert I think I've ever been to in my life, which is why I keep my tickets. Stuck. And we right. might have to have another, uh, we might have to have an episode where we talk about our top three, five. Well, my, my top would be like three pages of concerts. But <laughs> Right. Right. Because right. that's what I do. I do. I'm a list person. But yeah. But yeah, I remember seeing Queen the, the year prior really? uh, because in November of 78, I was entering a, a, a training center to become a missionary for my church. So uh, that, that was, that's interesting. But um, man, I can, I can, I can just hear the, the power and the energy. I, I didn't think they were that heavy, but Queen was really, really uh, melodic, but they were, they were really heavy live and loud. Right, yeah. and and when everybody was playing all the you know guitars and the drums and all that, it was great. But when that was gone, and all you could hear was Freddie's voice, yeah, it became just so powerful. That's and just, so phenomenal. That's just a rock and roll religious experience. Is what yeah, that is. Do you have absolutely? Do you have any idea what he sang to you? Acapella? Do you do you remember you know, it all? You know, I I don't right now. Um, it's been you know 40, yeah. 42 years. Right. right. <laughs> there's right. there's been a lot of distance <laughs> between <laughs> sure. that concert. I, um, I wish that I had a set list I, of what they played. I have Googled and go after you told me this. Uh-huh. I have searched and searched and searched for video or pic- the video is just going to be non-existent. Mm-mm. You just didn't do Mm-mm. it. Uh, for a set list for, and I watch, he'll pull it up. Um, <laughs> but even then I think he would have deviated from what their set list was. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And I, and the only thing I did find was I did find what I thought was the correct date mm-hmm. on one of their tour itineraries. And I was like, yeah. man, this is so great. So I did try to find some more information because I wanted to know if anybody else had told the story about him. Yeah. Singing like that. Well, my, my ex-husband does. Okay. He's my ex-husband Right, now. <laughs> right, right, right. And, uh, but that's just an, that's an awesome, awesome story. And I've loved it. And that's what got us to talking about music. Right. And that was what spawned the idea of coming on the show. And then you dropped this bombshell on me. So I don't know how, you, what you know about this, good sir. Not this water bottle. No, I was going to say, yeah, I found sorry. the set list, but. Um, um oh. Let's hear it. Uh, we Will Rock You, the fast version, which I really like. Uh, Let Me Entertain You, Somebody to Love, You Can't Beat Them, Death on Two Legs, I really like that. Killer Queen, Bicycle Race, I'm in Love with My Car, Get Down, Make Love, You're My Best Friend, Now I'm Here, Spread Your Wings, and then it says Acoustic, which was probably the break. Well, um, the, this picture shows Brian May playing an acoustic okay, guitar. Okay, well, it says Dreamer's Ball. Love of my life, and I can hear him actually singing that a cappella. Right. Uh, Thirty nine. It's late. Brighton Rock. Fat. Oh, and the, those are they were like three songs. Does that sound about right? Yeah, he probably sang about three songs. Okay. Before they got the sound back up. Because there's a gap in the list, and it goes back to it's late. Brighton Rock, which I imagine they had to have get electric guitars and drums. <laughs> right. Uh, Fat bottom girls, keep yourself alive. Bohemian Rhapsody and Tie Your Mother Down. Man, that's a... That's I a, can't believe you found that. That is a killer set list. Well, and he's a magician like that. I'll look for something for a week and, oh, it's right here. <laughs> His Googler works yeah. better than the, mine, but... Man, that's amazing. I can, In fact, of all the vocalists in that era, I mean, and there was a bunch of them. I mean, Roger Daltrey and, I mean, Ian Gillen, and you could name a bunch of them, but, but he was probably one of the few that could actually do that fill an arena right with with sound oh yeah i can just imagine i never saw queen i i got to know about queen probably around 80 whenever the game came out they had another one bites the dust yeah i think that was 80 
um, is when I got into Queen. So I didn't have much knowledge of them before that. Of course, I was 10. So uh, well, I was in love with Freddie Mer- Mercury, not realizing that Freddie would never reciprocate. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Time, because things like that weren't really talked about very right. much back then. Yes. He would have thwarted your, uh, <laughs> My advances. your advances. Right. advances. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. I, and I'm so sorry. Cause I think it could have been beautiful between you guys and yeah. maybe we could have had him in the studio. But, yeah. Um, but that's an awesome story. But the thing that I realized about this lady as this is, this is a rock and roll lady right here, man. Okay. I was, I was, you know, you walk past these people all day at work, and then she drops this bombshell on me. So, fifty years ago, last year, do you know what happened over in Louisville at the former Texas Motor Speedway? Uh, that would be the Texas International Pop Fest. That is correct. Now, raise your hand if. On that day in 60, in over that, what was it, Labor Day weekend? Labor Day weekend. Mm-hmm. Labor Day weekend in 1969. Raise your hand if you were at the Texas International Pop Festival. Mark, did you go to the Texas International Pop Festival? How old were you in 69? Three. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was 10. I was not yet here. I was 10. So. I might have been, what year, May? No, I wasn't on the way yet. No, September. Not you weren't even yet. a. Yeah. Well, we won't go there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So now I I don't want to spoil any of the story because this is great. Let's talk about who was on the bill. So on the bill, you went on Monday, we correct? Went on Monday. Now you you but you can't tell the story about why you had to go on Monday, right? Are we skipping that? Oh no, I can. We can. Okay. Okay. So we can tell that. Okay. Uh, so Monday, September first. Well, let's hang on. Let's back up a little bit. Well, so, and I was going to ask too because I've I, I got so intrigued by this because, I mean, just from the artistic standpoint because I love the old psychedelic poster thing, uh, but some of the posters show, uh, Led Zeppelin being on the bill where they did they actually play, and then some of them show Sly and the Family Stone and and I, I don't know if Zeppelin played or not. It says they did. So here's the lineup. So Saturday, August thirtieth, nineteen sixty nine. Grand Funk Railroad, Canned Heat, Chicago Transit Authority, which became Chicago, Mm -hmm. James Cotton Blues Band, I don't know that, Janis Joplin. My mother was in her class at Thomas Jefferson High School in Port Arthur. Wow. That's a true story. That's one I never got to go see. B.B. King, Herbie Mann, Rotary Connection, Sam and Dave. Pretty solid little lineup. Yep. Okay, let's move on to Sunday. Grand Funk again. Chicago again, James Cotton Blues Band, Delaney and Bonnie and Friends. I'd never heard of that. Yeah, you, yeah. no, I'm familiar Fabulous. with them too. Mm-hmm. Okay, the Incredible String Band, BB King, Led Zeppelin, announced as the Led Zeppelin, Herbie Mann, Sam and Dave, and Santana. Pretty solid little lineup. Yep. And then our distinguished guest on Monday was there for. The great Grand Funk Railroad, Johnny Winter, who I think you also professed love for earlier to me off air. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> and his brother, Anchor. <laughs> Either one. Okay. I'm happy with. Boy, All right. I, there's a whole different. There, never mind. I'll just leave it alone. I'll leave it alone. Leave it alone. Delaney and Bonnie and Friends, BB King, Naz. I do not. I'm not familiar with that at all. Sly and the Family Stone. I know about that. Spirit, which would have been cool. Sweetwater, 10 years after. And Tony Joe White. So, I want the whole shebang. The whole story. I want the whole story. When September of 1669, I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And I had a 20-year-old sister-in-law, so you can imagine the combination. Yeah. Um, And she came up to me the day before, and she said, I just heard about this festival and it's like Woodstock of course Woodstock had been held two weeks before Mm -hmm. and the news of Woodstock had already flooded the world so we all knew that there had been this concert where lots of people had gone and bell bottoms and skinny dipping and all that stuff and so she said not skinny dipping (laughs) so my (laughs) sister-in-law said they're having a second Woodstock and it's right here in the Dallas area. Right. And she said, let's go. 
I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I wow. wasn't, that I didn't wasn't, sound like any hesitation there, right. Carol. And I wasn't driving. She had the keys and the wheel. So um, the next day we hop in the car and we head off oh. to Louisville, not too far away. Okay, now hang on. Uh-huh. I, I show on record on Wikipedia that the festival site was the campground on Louisville Lake where hippies, where hippie attendees skinny dipped and bathed. So you Uh-oh. got some explaining to do. Uh, not Uh-oh. us. <laughs> we didn't do that. Sorry, go <laughs> I was ahead. Too young. Go ahead. Go ahead. So we we went to the festival and um, walked in. It was it was very loosely monitored and constructed. So. Um, you just kind of went up to an area like a, a booth and bought your ticket, and then it was all dirt. You walked on in, somebody took your ticket. Um, and we walk into this absolute sea of hippies, long-haired guys, girls with headbands and flowers in their hair, and, you know, lots of fringe and bell-bottoms. And uh, you were against all that. You were totally against. I wouldn't say I was against. Yes, oh. I just hadn't really been exposed very much as a young girl growing up in Dallas. So you're, um, are you going to tell us that you might have been a hippie? Well, not yet. Okay. Not at that oh, point. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that was a gradual. Here goes. Okay. Okay. gradual Here goes. <laughs> this is the launching pad. This was the launching pad of those <laughs> days. Um, so we walk in, <clears throat> and there were, there were like tents and things set up where people were vending and, and we walk by as we're heading to the main stage. There were actually a couple of different stages mm-hmm. with different music going on. But the headliners were all on the big stage. And um, they weren't playing yet. So we we're walking along and this hippie comes up to me. And he was obviously on something. I didn't know what. But I knew <laughs> that he wasn't quite in his right mind. And grabbed me and was trying to sell me birth control insurance <laughs> and I kept saying but I don't need that <laughs> oh, and he's oh, like man. he's like but you will someday and I was like I don't think so <laughs> trying to <laughs> trying to get away from him so it was one encounter after another <laughs> with people like this along the way and uh, we decided that we needed to get up to the stage fast because there were all these hippies trying to lay hands on us right what time of day were you coming in it was it we probably got there at oh it was in the heat of the day maybe two o'clock in the afternoon okay okay because the concert started at four the the main okay the main headliners okay okay the other stage had music playing all day long okay so it's hot and i'm you know we're wearing our shorts and our t-shirts whatever um, and we see up by the stage these hay bales kind of in a ring around the front stage. Mm-hmm. And some people had brought blankets. Some people had lawn chairs. We had nothing because we didn't know what it was going to be like. So we said, let's go sit up and lean up against these hay bales and watch the concert. That gives us something to, to lean against as we're sitting in the dirt. Right. So we go up there and we're sitting there and... Um, Come to find out, probably about midway into the time that we stayed, some people came up to us and said, "Uh, can we please see your press passes? And we said, what's that? (laughs) Turns out we were in the press box. It was hay bales. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) So they made us leave, and we had to sit on the other side of the hay bales and not have anything to lean against at that point. But Grand Funk Railroad opened every day. Mm -hmm. And... It was mesmerizing because we, when we were still inside the hay bales, we were like maybe six feet from them. It, right. I, maybe a little bit more than that, but it was not very far, um, probably from here to the wall. And we were that close to all these people who played. And they were great. We knew about Grand Funk. I mean, you know, we had listened to their songs and stuff. But after Grand Funk, comes Johnny Winter. Uh-huh. <laughs> and she fell in love. And he had a hat on and this long white hair. Mm-hmm. And I was like, sold. <laughs> 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 as soon as he started playing that guitar, I was like, you have my heart forever. <laughs> Hook, line, and sinker. Hook, line, and sinker. It, it was just 
a magical experience being out there. And it was truly the la- the, the days of what we used to call peace, love, and dove. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody loved everybody. We all were getting along. It was happy. Everybody smiling, laughing, mm. listening to music. That's awesome. It was just great. Um, so we got to see Johnny Winter, and then we got to see Bonnie and Delaney. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know your your list says Naz. I honestly don't remember them. But Sly and the Family Stone yeah. blew us out of the water. They were the best show. They really put on a show. For That's people. awesome. I, I became huge fans after that. Of right. Them. Um, and then we had to leave then because my dad wanted me to come home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the old curfew. Oh, yeah. I was only 14, and it was so, getting dark. We had to be home at dark. <laughs> so you missed Spirit? I did. Sweetwater? Yep. Ten years after, I don't know anything about Sweetwater. I, I I don't either. I would have killed to see Ten Years After. Yeah, Alvin Ten Lee. Years After, Boy. and then uh, um, Tony Joe White. Yeah, I don't Tony know who Joe White. Oh yeah, he was like a Cajun. He had a growling voice, and he'd sing real. He was he was cool. Okay, yeah, and Naz was White. the uh, the first rendition of Todd Rundgren. Oh, okay. Oh, well, uh, okay. There you go. That was his first band. There you go. Oh, okay, okay. Now I'm reading on this Wikipedia article that there are high quality bootlegs of this show. So and I, I might be in it. I'm gonna see if I can <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can wow. find some of this audio and I'll if I do I'll bring it to yeah. you. But well, yeah and if there's video, just look for the the hay bales. Yeah. <laughs> look for the fourteen year old with the look, birth look control for the, insurance. And, and no press pass. No press right. pass. <laughs> yeah. That reminds me of Vaken when I went there. Uh, nobody was getting close to the stage and of course in the states you get as close to the stage as you can mm-hmm. and there was nobody there and nobody stopping me so i just walked right up there and i had my camera in, the, in hand and and this nice gigantic german fellow said uh where's your pra- pass in german and i said you know nine weeks deutsch and he said where is your pass <laughs> and, and i said well i have my camera it's just not good enough. <laughs> so they made me move. But for the same reason, yeah. nobody stopped us. So right, we, just, right. we just went up there. But uh, interesting. Boy, I'd sure like to hear. I love Grand Funk Railroad. Oh, they were it was w- good. one of the first albums I ever bought was Shining On. And, and then I worked my way backwards. And man, I would have. I, you know, I, I would love to hear the, the audio. They, they were always there. I mean, it was always a band that you knew of and heard of. But they never, I don't think, came to the same prominence as some of the other bands did, and they were good. Mm-hmm. I mean, they yeah. should have. Well, I don't I, know why. They they had management issues, and uh, I think we've kind of semi discussed this. I mean, they got off a tour; they'd sold nearly eighty million records, yeah. and were penniless. They were pawning their equipment just to get a t- a train ticket back to Michigan. Yeah, and, and it was because that they had been robbed by basically their management yeah. company right is my understanding and and very unfortunate and that's when i mean uh, frank zappa took him under their wing and todd rundgren to name a person said we need to get you a a, a gold record so you can get back in in black mm-hmm. literally financially right. and henceforth they put out a gold album called uh, we're an american band mm-hmm. on yellow vinyl and uh or some of them are not quite as yellow but anyway <laughs> right uh but anyway and that's how they sprung yeah. back into prominence was with that mm-hmm. record but with the help of frank zappa and uh and todd rundgren so their guitar player now i think i've told you this is a guy named bruce kulik who we know from being in kiss, kiss. and mm-hmm. blackjack right but i know him because of kiss and um my good buddy chris is taking online guitar lessons from Bruce. And so they got to know each other well enough for Chris to ask the question, hey, they were playing at the Wildflower Festival this past year, in this past May, and, and he was able to to casually ask Bruce, hey, would there be any way that um, we could just shake Don Brewer's hand? Because his brother is older and is a huge Don Brewer Grand Funk fan. And Bruce gave him the full treatment Took him back and let him meet Don Brewer, and that's so cool. They got to see the yep. show, and and it was just, it's so cool when, I, the I love that these guys are still in. We've had discussions about, is it still Grand Funk? If it's only one guy, is it this band? If it's only one guy, but you know what? In a situation like that, where it's a classic rock band, 
and you get guys like Bruce Bruce Kulick to fill in for Mark Farner to fill yeah, in for Mark Farner. Work. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad that he's out there doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's cool. And and my only grand funk tie because that was before my time is the the one real tape that i have that's commercially <laughs> produced is grand funk live really i have a yeah i have one reel to reel tape which is it, on my lengthy list of great live albums yeah and so um that's my and i've seen them at wildflower a few years years before this past time they were there but, but to your point you know it may not be the same i think it was them i may be confused Using them with no, the no, it was, no. I think it was Grand Funk there. Uh, well, the, or this entity of Grand Funk. Mm-hmm. But the thing about it is, is you can go listen to the records, and that's great. But the live experience is what's so mind blowing. I right. mean, I could have listened to the Vader CDs at home and just said, "Ah, just cause I'll save my money." And right. But seeing them live and play a full set, and I, I it just nothing compares to the live, uh, the live version of of right. a band in whatever former format they are right uh i i just think that that lends to this exp- i mean she has memories of this great event because she was there and experienced it, it she didn't get that from just listening to a record right well <laughs> that, and I, that caused her to go see these things right and our our friend that did not make it today we had plans to have another friend of ours um mel caruth here today and mel's been under the weather so we want to Give Mel a good shout out. And sure. Hope you get feeling, brother. I'll say that right into the camera. Yep. Feel better, man. Feel better. But uh, his voice was not up to snuff, and he's still a little weak from his illness that he can't shake. But he has the program from the Texas International Pop Festival. Oh, I would he was, for that. He was there. So we were going to have a round table of, wow. you know, we were basically just going to push our chairs back and say, all right, go, you know, <laughs> tell us everything, you know. But it would be cool to see his... Um, program and one day we'll get him up here on another episode because when we do a doors episode if we ever do you've never met a doors fan until you yeah, this, until this you've met mr mojo mel Carew. He, he, yeah he's the holy lizard king ca- for sure <laughs> holy cow man <laughs> and so when they came through a few years ago obviously with uh ian yeah. asbury on vocals mm-hmm. but the other two guys they played at the Bronco Bowl, and Mel put on every pass of any kind that he had because he was connected with radio and stuff like that. He put on everything, and he waltzed through two or three layers of security and walked right back. To the, and I'll let him tell the story, but he was able to gain access to his heroes and get some stuff signed, and wow. he's got a really good story about wow. that. So if we do the doors, we gotta get, um, we got to get Mel up here. Yeah, the interesting thing about that is, is and of course, we're the metal roundtable, but all that stuff was the precursor. Right. I mean, I'll be honest with you. My parents thought Grand Funk, Deep Purple, and Aerosmith were heavy metal. Right. And, oh, and Led Zeppelin, not to mention, you know, uh, we, wh- whatever. We keep it uh, all things hard rock and heavy metal. But it's kind of like the roots. That's I mean, right. They're, 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 it started somewhere. And, and even some of, like, for, for example, the new wave of British heavy metal stuff is basically. It's rock and roll, but it's just speeded up just a just tad. Just a tad, yeah. And uh, and a little more operatic, like Freddie Mercury. I mean, like I said, I couldn't believe how I had heard the records, and some of the early stuff is really um, progressive and powerful, but nothing like the live show. No. I mean, it was stunning. Yeah, well, and their live records that are out there, Rainbow 74, have you heard that? No. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It is unbelievable. And then that thing, I think there is a full concert video of the tour that you saw. Oh, my gosh. Because I recognize the lights, and I can't remember what it's called, but they open with that fast version of We yeah. Will Rock You. Um, is, there's, that, is that live Montreal? I think it's on Blue, a Blu-ray. I, think, I you, think you might be right. I think you can actually get it on Blu-ray, but it's that set list. Yeah. There's a full concert video of this tour. Oh, I'll have to... See if I yeah, can. I'll, but, but I'll not, see if I can. But can't. not with Freddie sitting on the edge of the not stage the singing Arcpella. <laughs> now that right, right. I'll see if I can't hunt, hunt that up for you. But now, in a past episode, um, John and I have told our first concert experiences. So we talked about that before we came on, and I think you had a story that you wanted to tell about your I, first I concert. Can. Uh, yeah, let's let's, yeah, let's do it. So I'm I'm going to just back up a little bit um, because this also involves my sister-in-law, and we were actually a little bit younger even for this one. Um, she 
when we first met, introduced me to the music of Aretha Franklin. And um, that led into our first concert together, who was James Brown in 1968. Oh, my gosh. In the Dallas Convention James Brown. Center. <laughs> At well, where? Where was Dallas it? Dallas Convention Center, okay, okay. 1968. I was 13 years old for this one, and she was 18, maybe 19. Um, so we go down there to this, and she was like, come on, we're going to go see James Brown. I didn't really know who James Brown was. I was like, <laughs> okay. So the we, greatness. We go there. And the godfather I, of soul. The godfather of soul. I know. You would have thought that I would have known who he was, right? Um, especially because of another reason but we'll go into that another time <laughs> um so we go and literally all i could hear was him screaming i couldn't tell what he was singing i couldn't <laughs> tell what was going on it sounds like some of our shows but yeah it does there was one part especially <laughs> where everybody was singing and clapping and every, we were getting into it and I have to kind of back up also to say that we were the only two white people in this concert. Um, so we were, it didn't bother us, but obviously it was um, a different experience. So everybody's singing. I'm singing along, didn't know what I was singing. So I turned to this girl next to me, a young girl, and I said, what are we singing? As I'm <laughs> clapping and singing, she goes, I'm black and I'm proud. And I went, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> just had to kind of close my mouth at that point. <laughs> well, you're at least proud. You're though. proud. I mean, yeah. I was you proud. Know. But I, I proud I of all the new friends I, you've made at the James Brown right. concert. Didn't I mean, finish uh. singing that song. And I guess you didn't wear hot pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. no That's not, awesome. Not at that age. Yeah, it was, oh a, it was a different day and time back then. In the so this would have been what seventy six, seventy seven. Sixty-eight. Oh, Welcome to the show, John. Wow, that yeah, that. 1968, and oh, that's right. It would have been before the. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, and then on our way home, we drove home and we ran out of gas. Oh boy! <laughs> because neither of us thought far enough ahead to think. Gosh, you need to get gas when you're going to drive all the way down to the convention center. And back. <laughs> that's awesome. That's a great story. Um. I lost it, just like that. Do we have anybody that called in for the record? Anybody have any questions? <laughs> hey, did, our, did our caller call in? <laughs> Nobody? Nobody. Well, then I'm calling they probably, in. I'm... <laughs> they probably can't get past the receptionist down there. Well, <clears throat> that does it for episode 43 of the Metal Roundtable. I want to say thank you so much to my friend Carol for coming up. That was awesome. You're welcome. That, it's been fun. That was awesome. And you know what? Rob said you were a little nervous. I think you sounded super you did, pro. You, you were, were fantastic. Yeah. It's certainly did. better than our idiot I, I, I was. I was <laughs> glad to hear someone else chiming in instead of us. Well, we always appreciate good stories. We the, the experience of rock and roll and heavy metal that, you know, we like and stuff like that, it just brings people together, and it doesn't matter what age or it doesn't matter what demographic. Everybody loves music. And so I was so glad to run into you that day and get to talking and this is something that i've wanted to do for a long time and i'm glad that it worked out to be in the nice studio here right. it's, you oh, know it's in, wonderful instead place. of in my <laughs> standing in your uh, in, in your room music looking lair. at a laptop yeah <laughs> so this <laughs> much is much better yeah but uh thank you so much for coming i thank really you. appreciate it very much and um now we always sign off and this is going to be a little weird we're going to look right into that camera we're going to do devil horns okay now this is not hook 'em horns and we're gonna say if she wants to say hook 'em horns she can just say <laughs> you can say whatever horns. you want which, which way this way this, this way, way. This and way. we're gonna say metal will prevail are you ready all right and with that metal, metal will, will prevail. prevail yes